Hi guys, my name is Natalie Lorraine and welcome to my podcast, Sage and Whiskey, another episode. This will be episode three and during my podcast I will cover tarot forecasts, witch tips, advice, media spotlight, and of course, whiskey, okay? So this week I'm going to start out with the tarot forecast and it's pretty straightforward today. I pulled the space card for the overall week. And with that, Spirit is leading me to read what it says in the book. I am using the Sacred Earth Oracle deck. I love this deck. This is one of the, this was the first deck that I purchased last year when I decided to um, branch out. And it has been serving me well ever since. And if you're scared of, if you're thinking about tarot, I would suggest starting out with an oracle deck because it leads you to listen to your intuition more so than focusing on the actual words on the cards or whatnot. Like the tarot, tarot has a very... Most people, tarot has a 78 cards, the sweets mean something, each of the cards means something. It's a system, and while if you have a gift, you don't necessarily have to always follow what it says, but there is a general structure that many people follow. When it comes to oracle decks, it's not the same. It's They normally have a book that comes with it that gives you what it means. And then it's also up to you to go further. Anyways, without further ado, so the space card. It says, give yourself or someone else the space to think, heal, create, or contemplate. Hold space as a gentle, non-judgmental, and supportive presence. Nothing needs to happen instantly. Pull back, trust, and respect the boundaries and processes of others. Pushing for a result will not get you what you want in the long term. Choose your destiny and let others choose theirs. Well, honey, that makes sense. I know that right now, during this particular shift, people are evaluating a lot of things in their life, especially right now since we're going through a retrograde. I think it's Jupiter. If I'm not mistaken. And like like most shifts, and you'll hear this a lot, it always forces you to go within and it'll have a push pull effect. So right now, some of you are being asked to let go of things that no longer serve you. But at this point, I think people when it comes to relationships, right now is saying that don't rush anything right now because the space card is followed the two tarot cards that i have is the king of cups and the nine of cups this is saying don't force anything this is your mole or your mantra for the week if something does not fit if something does not flow do not force it that is so important for us and a lot of people i myself am guilty of that trying to force something You listen to your inner voice. Your inner voice will not steer you wrong. Even when you feel like you may have made bad decisions in the past, a lot of times that gut feeling, if you really just sit still long enough, you will know the answers and don't try to justify around it. A lot of people are guilty of that as well. So for this week, it's let things flow. If they don't flow, let them go. That sounds corny, but... That's what I got for you guys today. Now, moving on to my sage tip. I'm going to talk a little bit more about magic, per se. And specifically, love magic and sex magic. I know there are so many people that are going on the internet and finding these love spells and these... um, different binding spells and this and that and a third and I just wanted to give a quick tip about these now 
while some practitioners have a strict stance on love spells, I personally believe that they're okay. I just feel that they should only be done when absolutely necessary. And I don't believe in really influencing someone in a way that will tie them to you without their own free will involved, if that makes sense. So a lot of love spells, if the person is not aware of it, it is kind of going against their free will. But I am okay with you doing a love spell or a binding spell when it comes to someone that is okay with it. And I know that with a lot of practitioners, their partners are involved in the craft as well and are knowledgeable about this particular thing. So they don't have any really issues with it. But I will say that love spells are very powerful and they should not be done lightly and I know that when we are dating people and we like them we want to make sure that not even if you're not dating sometimes people do love spells on crushes to make them come to you that's a whole nother ball game I just want to say be careful with all of this and don't just read every love spell that you see on the internet they're all spell books and do realize that they are broken up into different practitioners there are so many subsets of magic out there that you want to be careful that you are not messing with something that you do not know how to undo so with that being said what i do feel like everybody can do is i would suggest instead of doing a love spell I would make a spray that makes you alluring to men or women, whoever. I know that's what I do. So that way it's kind of like a love spell because you're bringing people around you or if you have a person of interest, it's alluring them to you, but it's not really messing with their free will. It's just making you more attractive to them. It's like a gray area and I, so with me, I would say the top herbs, you don't need a lot for this. I would get a little plastic bottle, you know, the airplane bottles that they sell in Walmart, little plastic ones. If you can, if you're fancy, I would get a dark glass bottle that they use because of the herbs inside so that it won't spoil but if you can do that I would wrap the spray with something on the outside so that it doesn't get as much sun exposure and you really only need a few things I would use roses like fresh roses you can dry them or you can buy dried roses that's very good hibiscus is very good for love and what's another one orange peels orange peels so you can just put a little bit of that in there get some distilled water you can use alcohol I use gin sometimes for my um, concoctions and just set your intention for it and just wear that like a perfume you can wear it with all other perfumes as well but when you have that person of interest that you're around just spray it on you and you're good on the other flip side to take it a step further there is such thing as called sex magic now sex magic can be with a partner and it can be without a partner sex magic is something that is so simple it's essentially it doesn't have to do with love at all it's really any particular any particular what am I trying to say? Goal. Any potential goal that you have in mind. So let's say you want $100 by Friday. I know that sounds crazy. 
So when you are engaged in sexual acts with yourself or a partner, you keep that goal in your mind. And when you are about to climax or if you don't climax, just in the midst of it, I know it's kind of weird because, you know, if you're having sex with somebody else or you're having a relationship with somebody, you want to be in the moment. But if you can keep that in mind towards the end about this one thing, when you release that orgasm, that is a very, very powerful way of pushing that want into the universe. So you can do that. I prefer to do it by myself. That way I don't get distracted and the whole session is about that potential goal or whatnot. But I have also done it with a partner. And I can tell you, honey, it's simple. It's straight to the point. And it gives you an extra boost. And that's my sage tip of the day. I'm going to move on to my media spotlight. And today... I'm doing something a little different. It's really a music spotlight. I'm, I love music. Anybody that knows me knows that I love music. I grew up playing the violin in the upright bass. I've played them both for about 20 plus years now. I know I don't sound old, but I started really young. So I got 20 years in the game. I don't really pl actively play anymore, but music is still a very essential part of my life so my genre that I normally listen to is neo soul so that is where my artists are coming from but they won't always like I said in my last or my introductory video while I am involved in the craft I am I would like to say I'm a diverse I have a diverse group of interests and that goes to my music too I listen to pop, I listen to rap, classical, um, not so much country, but there are some songs. But today we're going to focus on the five neo soul artists I think that everyone should have in their playlist. And a lot of these I stumbled upon through watching TV shows or just kind of going through that playing a radio on Google Play or Spotify and then kind of getting recommendations. I think that's the best way to find out with new artists because a lot of times if you listen just to the radio or to your old playlist that you made 15 years ago, you won't necessarily get these new artists popping up. And I think they need love too because while we all have our go-to people, it, we all know that mainstream media often – pushes the really talented people, the people that won't sell themselves to make a deal to the bottom of the barrel. So we have to actively support them and actively search for them so they get a platform too. All right. So the first girl, I'm not even sure how to say her name. That's terrible. I should have looked her up to find out how to say her name. But her name is, it's spelled Sna, I say it's Sna Allegra. So it's S-N-O-H. I don't think I spelled her last name right. But if you type that in, and Allegra, or I think I spelled that wrong, but I have A-E-L-E-G-R-A. -E -E I'm sorry. I was typing fast in my notes earlier. But she is, I feel like she's so underrated. I don't listen to the radio too much, but I think I have heard a song of hers pop up not too long ago. So I think maybe she will be getting her shine on mainstream, which is great, but it makes me nervous because sometimes when people get that mainstream media, the sound changes or, you know, just something happens to them because it's tough to please yourself and to please your audience and to please that label. But the song that I love by her is If You Let Me. No, that's not right. Is that right, If You Let Me? No, the song is I Want You Around. I mixed her up with someone else. But she has great songs. So that's my first one. My second one is Leon Bridges. Now, I have heard from, I first heard of Leon Bridges from honestly watching Big Little Lies on HBO. And I have 
I'm always listening for the soundtrack of any TV show and or movie. I love soundtracks, whether they're instrumental um, or they have actual songs. I will always look up the soundtrack. So that's how I discovered him. And the song that was in one of the episodes was River. And he just has such a soulful voice for him to be so young. And I know he sounds like... I want to give him like 50s or 60s, like that real like down home, sitting on the porch, drinking lemonade or sweet tea in the South type of voice. And it, he's, it's just, you feel like you're there with him whenever you listen to a song and you feel what he's feeling. So River is the song by him. And Leon Bridges is L-E-O-N Bridges, just how it sounds. Third one is Sir. S-I-R. I heard from him when I went to the Kendrick Lamar concert here a couple years ago. And I really wanted to go see who was supposed to be there. My brain today. SZA. SZA was supposed to be there. I think. I think she was supposed to be there. It was somebody, it's on his label, on that label. and But she wasn't there. So basically everybody else that was on the label had to fill in the spot. So Sir was on there. And when he came out, like he's from California. So he has that whole West Coast vibe. He has dreads. And he came out and from his vibe with everybody else that was coming out, I thought he was going to rap. But Homeboy has a little voice on him. So... I was like, oh, and like a chill, like chill, neo soul type of deal. I mean, he has a little, little more hip hop influences, but it's still something that you can just put on and, you know, listen and chill in your house or clean with. And the song that I have from him is Queen. And so it's basically dedicated to black women. He's a black man and I just love his sound. He's coming out. I think he's changing his sound a little bit because I think the newest song he came out with, not really rocking with it. But I still rock with him. I'm going to see what else he has on this upcoming album. The next group is like a personal favorite of mine. And they are sensational and so underrated. And I have been listening to them for many years. The group is called The Internet, spelled just like it sounds, The Internet. It's a group of four men and one girl, the lead singer, Sid. And they are, I don't, they're so diverse, they can switch up their sound. I, there are not many groups or artists that I can listen to straight through without skipping a song. When I put on the internet or any of their albums or like internet, the internet radio, I can literally listen to every single song that they have. And that's saying something. But the song that I feel like everyone should have in their playlist and their rotation is Hold On. It's a great, great song. Real chill. Real. It's got a little bop to it. You know, it's not as chill as the other ones. But it makes you want to make a baby as well and then my last one I don't know how I found this girl her name is Savannah Christina it spells Savannah like Savannah Georgia and Christina is spelled C-R-I-S-T-I-N-A the song I have for her is self-care and I stumbled upon her probably going through something you know like I'm very influenced by events in my life like most people you go through I think I was going through a breakup or going through something and I stumbled up upon her and she actually has quite a few songs she's a very like very new artist to me and I think she's also a new artist on this YouTube platform that's where I found her but please listen to her I'll listen to all of them and let me know what you think if you have any recommendations of artists that you think I should listen to Definitely comment below or send me an email about it. 
that's my media spotlight for today. I hope you enjoy those. And my last thing, I'm not going to hold you guys too long. Last week was almost 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep it under 30. Since I am a single host podcast, which is really not that many, I don't want to be sitting here rambling for 18 hours. I just want to get in there, do my job, and get out of here. Just long enough for someone's commute to work. Now, the whiskey recommendation I have this week, it's not even really a recommendation. This is a throwback that I decided to put in my rotation again, but I realized that I don't love this whiskey, but it's still not a bad whiskey. It's Johnny Walker Black. Now, Johnny Walker, to me, is like America's whiskey. It's something that you can go into any, like, bar, and they're going to have at least one of them. Now, Johnny Walker Blue is the most expensive one of that line, and it'll cost you a pretty penny per glass, probably up to $20. It depends, because a bottle of it, I believe, is like two-something or one-something. I haven't bought a bottle in a long time. But it's up there. But I don't think it's really worth the cost, to be quite honest, the blue. I think you can get what you're trying to get with the black and save. A bottle of black is like $80. I didn't get the big bottle. I got the little small bottle because I was just going to drink it over the weekend. And since I try to buy a new whiskey every weekend for this podcast, I don't need to buy a big bottle unless... I plan to do a series, which I probably will, because I like whiskey, and sometimes I want a bottle and not just a sample. So, but what the the thing about Johnny Walker, at least to me, it has this aftertaste, but it's still not a bad whiskey. It's smooth. It just has this aftertaste. It's got a little bite, and I think that has to do with how it's processed. But... Some people like it. I hate Johnny Walker Red. So black, if you're going to get any of them, I would get at least black. It's going to cost you a little pretty penny, but you're going to like it. Johnny Walker Black, straight, chilled, is amazing. And then, what else? Oh, the recipe. I would say the best way to drink many whiskeys, if you're intro to whiskey, is to do a whiskey sour. So with this, I did a whiskey sour with Johnny Walker Black. I actually liked it, but I preferred it with ginger ale. So the whiskey sour, two ounces of Johnny Walker Black, three-fourths of an ounce of simple syrup, and three-fourths of an ounce of of lemon juice if you don't have it you can just do the sweet and sour mix I don't like it it's too sweet and too tangy for me the kind that they use in the bars so I got I use a fresh lemon because I'm I'm fancy like that but I did buy a big bottle of simple syrup because that's something that you can use in so many cocktails so there's three ways you can drink it straight up chilled I did uh, the whiskey sour and there's also the ginger ale just a little top it off but overall you can go wrong with Johnny Walker but there are other ones that are cheaper than that but try it out and see if you like it let me know comment below and I'll be back next week with a different whiskey and a movie for you guys so thanks again for watching or not watching. (laughs) Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next week. Bye!